Good morning. It's Wednesday, November 21st, 2018. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, End of the Track, and our scripture is Mark chapter 13. The day is coming when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing where he should not be. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person out on the deck of a roof must not go down into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible will it be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days? And pray that your flight will not be in winter. For there will be greater anguish in those days than at any time since God created the world. And it will never be so great again. In fact, unless the Lord shortens that time of calamity, not a single person will survive. But for the sake of his chosen ones, he has shortened those days. Then if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or there he is, don't believe it, for false messiahs and false prophets will rise up and perform signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Watch out. I have warned you about this ahead of time. This passage is filled with urgency. It's like advice to the people scrambling to get out of the pathway of the wildfires. Don't stop to pack or even pick up a toothbrush and, oh my gosh, is that woman about to go into labor? When you're on a locomotive and the end of the tracks is clearly in front of you, you do not spend a moment emptying the trash bucket in the restroom. It makes sense. Get off that choo-choo right now. Of course, scholars would explain that Jesus was speaking of the immediate future in 70 AD when persecution for his group would blaze. These things did happen, just as the Lord prophesied. But there's a second meaning corresponding to this warning. In the scripture, 2 Thessalonians particularly, the second coming of Christ is preceded by a great falling away as people reject God's authority and leaving worship and obedience to the word of God as empty as most churches these days. Historically speaking, the church has always been positioned in Advent. It's not just a season on the calendar, but rather the constant hope of all Christians. We are awaiting the grand re-entrance of Christ returning to rule the nations. Now, that's a well-known Christian doctrine that one day, an unknown day except in heaven, the risen Messiah will return to earth to set everything in its rightful place. Preaching during Advent takes on a tone of expectancy, not just the celebration of his first arrival in a manger, but the urgency of an imminent breaking in. The king could come at any time. But notice the very end of Mark's remembrance of Jesus' warnings has this, do not be deceived. With urgency arrives the possibility of frantic behavior. That's so opposite of what Jesus told his disciples. He said, I give you peace, and it's so different than the world's idea of peace. I give you my peace that overcomes whatever craziness life can throw at you. Here's how the Apostle John recalled what Jesus said. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart, and the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Frantic people move around from place to place, church to tent revival, to prayer gatherings and prophecy seminars, all in a frenetic attempt to gain some new insight or hear some new and more fascinating angle on when the second coming will happen. Friends, that's exactly how deception becomes a possibility. Jesus' instructions to the disciples, including us, is to be unafraid. That means our job is to live into and rest in the peace that he promises. You cannot do that running from one brand of church to another or frantically searching for some new doctrine or better way. Life in the kingdom is lived out one moment at a time, largely in the ordinary everyday tasks that connect us with people who are real, with diapers being changed, going to work, cutting the grass, helping the neighbor with a leaky faucet. Now, that's hardly sensational sounding, but that is the way Jesus said it would be. Two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. 
Now, all that said, common sense in the peace gift that Christ gives us also tells us to be Adventists. Christians who understand that the times always point to the imminent return of our Lord, and the condition of contemporary culture couldn't be riper for that harvest. For you today, many years ago I received a gift of a little gold lapel pin that looked like a trumpet. It had two words, perhaps today. Perhaps. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.